So for this exercise, we shall be creating um, a synthetic scannery, which will be used for endpoint monitoring. So the first thing is for us to get into the CloudWatch dashboard, and this is the CloudWatch dashboard. And if we go down to the bottom left side menu, we shall find the synthetics option, and under that we'll find the canary. So we'll click on the canaries. Okay, so the page has loaded, and at the moment we can see canaries are zero. There are no list of canaries to show, but we're trying to create a new canary. So for us to do that, we're going to click on create canary. We'll click on create canary. It's going to give us the different options on how we can create a canary. We can see we can use a blueprint, we can use an inline editor, import from S3, but we don't want to do all that um, configuration. We'll just go straight to using the blueprint. And under the blueprint, there are different kinds of blueprints. We have the heartbeat monitoring, API canary, broken link checker, canary recorder, GUI workflow builder. So this broken link checker is really a very cool feature that can help you to check for um, broken links within your website. But for our scenario, we shall be looking at the heartbeat monitoring. Okay, so this is the canary builder configuration. The first option here is to write in the name of the canary. And for our example, we shall be using the name monitoring packet site, which is what we want to use for the canary. And then the next is the application endpoint or URL. You can also see what's the website you're trying to monitor it. So we take URL and ensure we put the HTTP protocol because it's one way it's valid it is validating the URL. So we remove the space. Okay, that's validated properly. So the next says is asking us if we should take screenshots of the web page. Um, we can leave that by default. Or we can uncheck it if you don't want to. Doesn't matter, but let's leave it by default. And then it's showing us the lambda function that is going to run to perform um the heartbeat check. Okay, that's it continues to ping this URL from time to time to ensure it's always returning a two xx or two hundred. Um, status HTTP status code. Um, here we have environment variables. If we have any other information we want to add, we can add it here. And then here is the shadow. So for this shadow, we can say it should run it once or it should run it continuously. Now, when we are monitoring the endpoint of the website, we need to continue to check to make sure the website is available. So we can leave it to run for five minutes by default, or we can even reduce the time to make it run for one minute which is going to increase okay, the number of times it pings the website. So it pings it every minute. So if there's a downtime within a minute, it's going to find out uh, on like five minutes. That will take another five minutes before it checks it. But let's leave it at five minutes um, since we're just doing a simple demonstration. And then the retention of the canary data, um, we can make it 31 days failure. How, how long does it keep failure data? 31 days or more. Or you can put a custom range. Same for success data. And then this is the, the S3 bucket where it's going to store the data that is collected from running the canary. And then for permissions, it actually gives us the option to create a new rule for this to work. And there are a couple of other things here. We can This way we can configure our CloudWatch alarm in case something happens so that we get an alarm that something has failed. Um, VPC settings. So this is used when your canary or the URL here, you're trying to monitor is in a private url or a private um, environment where it's not accessible over the internet and then when everything is done we can click on create canary the last option here is um if we want to activate tracing using aws x-ray but we don't want to do that right now so let's just click on create canary so it says this official may take up to a minute or please be patient when it completes so the reason why it takes a couple of minutes is because it actually creates a lambda function, okay? And that lambda function will, will create lambda function, move this code into the lambda function and make it available. So that's why it kind of takes a few um, seconds for it to be available. So let's just give it a few seconds and um, to be available soon. Okay. Our canary is now successfully created. It says canary monitoring packet size was successfully created. 
and here is our canary it's saying that the state is running and um, this is the name and um, right now when was the last run no data because we just created it so it's going to take a couple of um, minutes before some interesting insights will be available but before then let's click on it and see what other interesting information we can find so we can see that the last run passed okay it means it has run before we clicked it and then there has been no issues for 24 hours and it's 100 percent success rate so what success rate means is that the it don't it did a ping on the website and it returned a 200 status code that means that there was no problem with the website and we activated screenshots and yay we can see the screenshots of the website which is the packet home page we can go over into monitoring and see more interesting metrics that we would like um, to know about this canary that we just created So from the dashboard here we can get more information which all are not available yet because we just created a canary so you're going to see that it has run for only 22.8 seconds how many status code have we gotten 400 as zero how many 500 faults do we have zero which means the whole everything about the website is running peacefully if you look very closely you see a dot here for the 2xx which is the count of 370 and it means that everything is okay errors there are no there's nothing in the graph which means there's no error and um, for faults there's no error and response field requests no response field request there's no error so it means that our website is up and running and this is how we can configure and monitor endpoints so any kind of endpoint website URL APIs endpoints anything that has a HTTP protocol and at the bottom here, you're going to find the Lambda metrics to also show you if there are errors in the Lambda functions and them. Um, so far, so good. There are no errors. Thank you very much for this. In this demonstration, I'll be showing us how we can um, monitor step functions using Amazon Event Bridge. So Amazon Event Bridge will be able to read um, activities within um, a step function so this if a step function fails during an execution or it was successful event bridge can also be used to trigger another kind of service or also to trigger sns simply to send a notification um, step functions is a, a serverless service that is used for running a process in a sequential format so if you have a couple of lambda functions you want to run in a particular sequence okay in a particular um, consecutive step-by-step -step process you use step functions for that um, kind of setup and it could be it could get complex in knowing what exactly is wrong with your step function and if it's at um at a particular stage or what lambda function is failing so having event bridge um attached to your step function is a very very brilliant way of being able to detect activities of your step functions because by default they really don't have alarms so let's configure let's quickly configure an event bridge for a step function we already have a step function we created but um let's go over to amazon event bridge and create an event bridge for it so this is our management console we click on amazon event bridge all right so here we are at amazon event bridge and we simply click on create rule to create a rule for our step function so right here in creating a rule we're going to give our rule a name and we're going to call it compress image event so compress image event so we're assuming that our our step function is part of a an image compression um process part of an image compression pipeline okay so we're going to call the event bridge monitoring a step function compress image event so the next thing we're going to write here is description which is pretty much um, optional but we'll just put it there you know an event listener for compressed image step function an event listener for compress image step function okay so the next thing here is to click on the event pattern we want to use so we'll click on event pattern and under event pattern we'll pick predefined pattern by service and under that we choose our service provider and we're going to use AWS for that because it's a native AWS service we want to monitor event for 
and then for the service name we are going to be using step function okay step for step function and we'll click on it and um, what event type so th there are various event types that we can monitor within our step function so let's pick um, step functions execution status change and under status change we have specific statuses that we can check so we have running succeeded failed timed out and aborted so most times what you really want to know about is when an event fails it times out or it's aborted it means that that event did not run the way it was designed to so for this scenario let's pick on failed so you can always you know configure for timeout or aborted so let's click on failed and um, the next thing here is what specific um, step function do we want to monitor because you could f you could actually monitor any execution okay or a specific um, ARN so we're going to get the ARN of our step function and paste it right here so let's quickly go to step functions and get our ARN and then paste it right over here okay now that we have our step function um, ARN we're going to paste it right here so with that we have generated the event pattern JSON for um, monitoring um, the events of our step function um, so for selecting our event boss we will leave AWS default event boss that's the only option we have right here and then the target so the target simply means what is going to happen in case there is a failure okay in case um, not really a failure in case um, the event is triggered by event breach so what's the target what's going to happen after then so for this scenario we can simply you know select an SMS topic that we already created so for our target we we'll pick an SMS topic and um, attach a topic so we, we kind of have a topic right here so you need to have created a topic before you come here if not your topics will be empty so I'm picking my topic which is a topic I already created so that when um, the event is triggered it automatically sends a notification to me as an email maybe as an SMS or whatever kind of notification I choose to use okay we review this a little bit once more and um, if we are okay with it we click on create so we successfully created the event bridge and what's going to happen is whenever we run our step function and it fails it's going to send an, an, an email to us and tell us oh this step function has failed okay so we can easily go in there and find out what has happened so apart from using event bridge to check what's going on with your step function in an in a more serverless and event driven manner you can also you know go through your step functions um in a manual way so let's go to services and head over into step function so step function is under application integration okay so here we are in the step function we can click on the step function and see a very simple um monitoring this executions that shows us when um, if j the step function the state machine was successful or it failed so this is a very basic way of knowing but you're not going to always be on the console to be able to view this so that's where um event bridge we just talked about helps a lot when so when it fails you can always jump in here and see what happened you can always click on the job to get more details about um what happened what what caused it to fail and um you also have um the login so it actually logs um the activities of your step function um, which we configured when you were creating the step function and you can also um, configure that for your own step function so um, you get more information when you click on CloudWatch log group you can see there's a CloudWatch log group here and it gives you more information about the step function login so this is where um, the step function um, is actually configured for login so if you come down here during the creation process you can see there is a whole section here for login and this whole section helps you to configure the login so what kind of information do you want to log is it all log levels do you want to configure just error login so with an errors it logs that on cloudwatch or fatal or simply off which means you don't want to log anything entirely so that's where the configuration is um 
you can i can actually always disable this and save it so it means that no login will be done so it also um helps you configure the cloud rush log group you want to use if you have an existing one you want to create a new log group you can do it right here and then when you enable it automatically pushes those logs into cloud watch logs lastly we can see something interesting here we have amazon um, x-ray here for tracing so it helps you trace activities of and um, the step function thank you